Uh, hello, uh, my name is Clifford Broadway, and I am with the One Ring dot net. Okay. <laughs> hello, everyone. It's so good to see you this morning. Um, let's begin. Where is your husband, Kellerman? Yes. Will we see anything of your brother, Elros, at all? How far would you go for immortality? I don't have to. That's, <laughs> That's so pretty incredible. good. Incredible. Nothing beats that. That's <laughs> pretty good, isn't it's it? The most Where is your husband, Kellamore? I couldn't possibly say, but there's five seasons of the show. Us? Um, so. Okay. Yes. So eventually we will... Oh, no. Nice. Okay. But very exciting character. Really? Well, okay. I lo yeah, lots to explore there. Um, yes, there is so much to explore yeah. there. And let's, let's start with that. Um, what is it about Tolkien's work that has such staying power, generation after generation, what is it that you think, as, as opposed to other fantasy writers, that ha that uh, Tolkien stays with parents? Mm -hmm. They hand the stories down to their children. Uh, what is it, you think, that, that makes Tolkien last as long as he's lasted as a, a cultural phenomenon? Mm -hmm. I, um, I think Tolkien, to me, is much more about hope over despair than good versus evil. Mm. And I think that's something just beautiful to hand down to your children. There's a Welsh saying called, um, um, a Welsh saying that says, hope is a safe anchor. Um, and I think that's really beautiful. And so, yeah, I think it's that. And they have given me hope. I think fantasy in general gives us hope. And it mm. allows us to kind of see possibilities for other worlds and other ways of being. Understanding of the inevitability of evil and the amount of presence of mind and vigilance that it takes to eradicate it over time. Mm. He understood the quintessential and deeply human battle between light and dark. And it makes for compelling literature, but also it is fundamentally who we are as readers and as consumers of what he's created, that, that it is in the area between the two that life happens. Um, and he understood that and he imbues it in everything that he created. And I feel like what the work we've done is, is an extension of that. And I think as well, the world that he created is very heterogeneous and everybody in it as well. They're there, they're going, right, why are we here? And where are we going? And that's a very human thing as well, mm. that everybody questions why they're here and what do they need to do and sort of make sense of that when we're born, you know, <laughs> we're taught things and then we have to unlearn things and unpick it. And we're always questioning ourselves, where are we going? Yeah, what's my place? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's that as well. That is a, a through line throughout Tolkien's work, I feel. I read Tolkien's essay on fairy stories. And I think when you understand the power of myth and fantasy um, in, uh, in escape and recovery and all these aspects that he talks about, you understand that what the what it's meant to do is to to cushion you into to experiencing your existential longing um, mm. in a comfortable way, so that we can and that's universal. It belongs to all of us, and I think that's the timelessness of it. Yeah, it's he's condensed some of the the great world myths into one story mm. in, in in a way that we can fully get involved and understand and. And but you know the the low you know you mentioned the Midlands sort of the locale of of Tolkien, but because of the because it's filtered through myth, makes it makes it global in that sense. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 individual experience, is is the is the collective experience. So yeah, I, I just that's the great gift, isn't it, of, mm. the, of, the, of the mythology? Mm. Yeah. I think it's just enduring. You know, as you say, hope, love. Um, stories of, of good and evil and that, that nothing is entirely good and nothing is entirely evil and that these stories will last uh, will last forever and they'll always endure and uh, no matter how old you are or what time you live in I think that's the beauty of Tolkien's work is it it will you know forever resonate I think yes will do may we uh, a lot of fans a lot of fans have said that the character, this great character from the books, was done dirty by previous adaptations, failing to give a real glimpse 
of the heroism and the fiber of this character. So are you ready to go on the Isildur rehabilitation tour? <laughs> <laughs> I feel very privileged and honored to, to play this character who is a complex one mm. as well because he does something that kind of a lot of people are, are confused about because he had the opportunity to defeat evil. But at the same time, you know, we are all human. We all have the capacity for good and evil in us. But I hope throughout the the seasons and, and the duration of the show that you understand his choices at, towards the end and it gives you a, a full glimpse and understanding of him as a character mm. especially we, we we have the privilege and 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 to, to, to explore these characters in the beginning you know and you understand them from from the ground up and we, we can yeah indeed well let's let's compare the old characters and new characters mm -hmm. is it any easier is it any more liberating to fill the shoes of a new Tolkien character versus another original character that has a burden of association or relatedness in the in the man in the in the fans' minds, so to speak. I think it's a it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. Yeah, I know. Like, you look at some of the other cast members and and they're canonical and they've got pages upon pages of research they can do on themselves and really look at each like individual event that you know that character would have gone through and they can think about how that affects them you know in the situation that they are in you know in the moment whereas um being a character that's been brought up from the ground it's sort of you need to you know luckily my character's only 14 years old so i'm only going to think about 13 years of experience um rather than thousands <laughs> but um yeah so it's it's nice to be able to have a little bit you know more of a say in in my character but at the same time it's it also be a little bit nice to have hundreds of pages of guidance <laughs> indeed that's a great answer um yeah. are you guys ready to go darker with this Tolkien adaptation than than the way Tolkien has ever been adapted before things in the second age get pretty hairy near the mm -hmm. end mm -hmm. Yeah. To do, yeah. I think we're just excited. We, I get so excited whenever I get a script because they, we, 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 we <laughs> when it's like Christmas Day, we're like, we're, we all just get together and we're like, compare our, our notes. But, um, yeah. Yeah, but the tragedy of Numenor is, I get sad thinking about know, that. Yeah. And also, like, now that we've kind of seen how we've created it and also just seeing all those supporting actors there, it was like, they were Numenorians. And so, yeah, it's going to be tragic. Mm. How did you write that? I mean, I like, I think darkness as it's called is truly the closeness, the, the closer you can get to the complexity of, of our human life, you know, conflict, darkness, like things are not in this middle ground. We experience a lot of conflict. We experience a lot of temptations. We, we, we trial and error, you know, so I do love characters that get dark, that, that, that have that push and pull. And I think you're going to see much more of that and I believe in all of our storylines. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. It's, it's not as good as you going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's That's so pretty good. incredible. Nothing beats that. That's it's, pretty good, isn't it's it? It's the most delicious meme-worthy thing that <laughs> I've <laughs> ever seen. Is you doing, beckoning, come, come. <laughs> Feanor's, you. you know, grandson, <laughs> yeah. beckoning people. What on earth? I love it so much, so I love good. it. How far would any of you go for immortality? Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, I wouldn't. Mm. No, I, I wouldn't I would. because I think I'm I'm terrified of. I think Morfid was 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 talking about how terrifying it is to to sort of be involved with the history that you know what she the way she described it to me was um, you know the research she did made me feel like I was like that that would be so daunting to remember your. The history, not something that that is told to you, but something that you experienced um, ages back, and then have to carry forward with you. I think that's terrifying. It would be an interesting condition if memory could be could be lessened as you as you proceed, progress through immortality, because then you wouldn't have to live in torment. That's true. Like remembering the painful things. Yeah. That would be that would be um, debatable. Right. I think as a new Minorian, uh, I'm right on the on the edge of that, and that's the choice mm -hmm. in society. That's where the desire for immortality yeah. is, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's clear, given given the option and, and where we where my character starts, he's lost his wife, so he's he's living as as a grieving 
husband and father to his children. So, so would he take the choice of immortality? He would have done previously, but his elven heart knows that that's not what's been given by Luvatar. So, so there's a there's a real struggle with that. The second age has all this breathing room, while everything in the third age and the War of the Ring is very explicitly written about. Mm -hmm. Is there something freeing in that? Hugely so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me. Well, because you're, I mean, because there is a, as we've said, a blueprint. Uh, it's a kind of joining the dots and colouring in, and um, and to, to be given that um, as an opportunity as an actor is is, is very freeing. Um, and but it's not just you doing it. The heads of department, the you know the showrunners, the director, all contribute, obviously. Um, so one doesn't feel a pressure. One does feel a freeing, and uh, and often in, in some of our cases, a, a, a you know great privilege to be playing these characters for the first time mm. uh, uh, with yes. no previous history of other versions. Yes, yeah, so it's like there's a structure there which ho which holds you in place. He's created a sort of safety net mm -hmm. of narrative, but he's in terms of the other minds and hands phrase that he came out with. You know that he's he's opened it up for interpretation and given particularly JD and Patrick this opportunity and, and us by extension for for interpreting these roles to to mm -hmm. op open them up and make them fully rounded and human and capable of being part of the pool. Put it that way. Even then, he continued to change his mind, which is mm -hmm. also quite. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, wow. Will we see anything of your brother, Elros, at all? Even a flashback? Just a smidge? Anything? <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I, I really do hope so. You know? The first king of Numenor. I know. What a fascinating character he would be. I mean, we, you know, um, Numenor is a wonderful, wonderful place, and I'm, I'm really excited for people to experience it and get lost in it and um, hopefully learn about its history. I've been curious about that too because yeah. I want to know the answer to that. If we yeah, can. I can see, see him in your eyes every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's. Let, okay. Do you feel the burden of history in your character, and does it affect the way you work on your character? I, I think all of us are like. I well, I, I guess feeling any burden is just a human feeling. Right? We can all relate to that sense of whether it's the weight of responsibility or sense of guilt or, you know, that that's just a human emotion. So, you know, there's that larger idea, and especially if you're playing a, a sort of a, a heightened character in a heightened world, that that is any different from how you could just feel as just your regular self on any old day. And so I think the humanity of that, that's, you know, you see, you know, great characters, but feeling very sort of human, relatable things. And that's why I think these stories resonate and they will always resonate because you just sort of latch on to something that feels very familiar. And I know when I was, you know, um, inhabiting Midiel and thinking a lot about her sense of responsibility and that burden and that sense of isolation around that burden, um, I felt like I was feeling that. I felt like I arrived to New Zealand and had a lot on my mind and this character was a place to put all the thoughts and feelings. It felt like a very protective space in that way. So yeah, I think all of us as actors, as characters, and just any person knows what it is to have that sense of burden. Mm. Mm. Yeah. There's something fun about, sorry Rob, there's something fun about playing, you know, we're, we're in the second age rather than later. So we're actually, you know, at, at a, an earlier period of time. So the the burden had the sword of doesn't exist yet. Actually, if we go further further back to the start of things, you know, we we can we can learn about our characters. We can we can try and find information there. But 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 they we're at the start of a journey here. The 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 weight of their expectation is going to sort of grow, you know, as things happen mm. to their characters yeah. and storylines yes. evolve. But, yes, very but at the minute, actually, it's it's quite. I found anyway, it's, it's quite a it's quite a fun time, quite a freeing time. Mm answered my other question. It must be more freeing, perhaps a little bit more liberating to have this leeway in the Second Age versus all the specifics we know about the War of the Ring, which were much more detailed. You, you do feel kind of this flexibility and this breathing room, perhaps, yes. Yeah, and I think that the, the, we talked about the analogy of, you know, the, the bare bones of stories that Tolkien has, has written around the Second Age and, and where there are really exciting stories, but they may be not fleshed out. J.D. and Patrick, the, the showrunners, have, have shone torches there and said, well, how could we, you know, how could we make these characters three-dimensional, you know, it, enrich them, make them complex characters? So actually, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of wonderful bit of two worlds. We've got the, we've got the original stuff from Tolkien and then, and then we've got this spotlight of how to deepen it and enrich it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready to go darker than any Tolkien adaptation <laughs> has gone before? Because you know what happens by the end of the second age. 
Yeah, we do know what happens by the end of the second age. Um, what do you think about that? The, the, where it ends up, it, go, it goes pretty dark. It does, it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess what we all get to do is, is uh, you know, investigate our, our own relationships to that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. What I like about where we start is we are in a time of relative peace, peace. you know. Everyone has a relationship with the peace and it's, it's complicated. Um, but you would you could call it peace. Um, and how long is that going to last? <laughs> <laughs> well, you also don't want to get there ahead of yourself, drama. too. You know, I think just as actors, and I feel like you've made this point, too, about you kind of want to be where you're at and not get too far ahead. This is really about watching a journey, and, and for us, it's about portraying a journey. So sort of knowing the end point you know where you're going it's going to be you know there are many ways to get there so I think even mentally I know for me I don't think too much about the end point it's sort of like the way in which you arrive at that place how far would you go for immortality you're already there yeah <laughs> you mean as a person or as a character let's extrapolate um, let's put this all right we're in the primary world and mm -hmm. you can be an elf or you have the choice of the gift of men Personally, I have no interest in being alive for forever. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Character-wise, it sounds pretty great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the gift of men in real life is more interesting. Yeah. I don't want to be your life. I, 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 I'm very curious about elvenness. Like, I love, I love that aspect of it and what it would mean. You know, because at some point you could die, essentially. Like, that, that is there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, at some point you could, but how far could you take that and what you would see... You know? Do you think yeah. you'd take more risks then? After like after you've hit like five hundred years, you'd kind of go. Oh, <laughs> I'm oh, getting I'm, bored of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think so. Yeah, because I've always extreme sports. <laughs> yeah, I, I always I've always wanted to be a vampire. Like like I've always been curious about that. Oh, yeah. so I think an elf is a kind of a little cooler or safer. Well, uh, did these kinds of metaphysics come into your work? Come into your rehearsals day by day? Because to Tolkien. This was the, the, the grist of the whole story, was mm. these metaphysics. How did it come to bear in your work? Well, you, you, you see it actually in the, in, in the, in the first episode, really, with, between myself and, and Eldrond, because um, there's been, uh, there's been a, a quite a lot of time spent apart. They're, 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 they're really close friends. And, and my reaction to 20 years apart is huge, because, you know, I've, I will have married and, you know, children come into play, and and for him, it's just like going to the going on holiday for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So the kind of that it was interesting playing with that and seeing how that works out between two, um, well, between between both of us. So it's it, it plays quite a big part actually in our story, mm -hmm. obviously. Did you ever uh, stop and check any of the Tolkien books, like on the set in the middle of the day, and stop and think, oh wait, let's look. It was before that, right? Yeah, before it was. It, it was would, like yeah. oh, we did our homework before we got on set because if you have to ask it on set, it's too late. Yeah. Uh, we also I, did I, have talking experts on. Sorry, yeah, no, no, no. we had talking experts on deck pretty much, yeah. and you could go check and ask, and and they were there to help you figure things out. Because as an actor, you're kind of focused on the task at hand, which is this character and that like more central nuggets of truth, you know. Mm. So we were supported by it by an ample. Uh, group. Plus, we've got JD and Patrick, and we yeah. have Robert Romeo. Um, and yeah, Robert. Robert. <laughs> we had him, and we also had. We started doing this thing where, like, maybe kind of every week, every couple of weeks, we did this kind of Tolkien reading session that anyone could come to if they wanted to come to it. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so it'd be like the Silmarillion. We'd read it. That's so dorky. Anyway, we'd read a chapter of the Silmarillion. And then we discuss it, and then we do that every Sorry. week. That doesn't sound dorky. Awesome. That sounds heaven. Um, yeah. I mean, it was fun. It was depends fun. on the vantage point. I logged in one day, <laughs> and I saw what was going on in the room temp, and I would just went leave meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Sometimes we have like you know banana bread and stuff. It was yeah, that was good. I'm excited, so excited. The heart, the way the Harfoots are realized, beautifully, beautifully done. Do you get a feeling that there's some of that English Midlands? still going on that Tolkien was playing with, with his idea of the halflings? Well, I think so. I think what was so brilliant is that there were, you know, half it specifically weren't exactly um, elucidated upon in the material, in, the, in Tolkien's writing per se. And so I think that it was exciting to take kind of the world that, that, he'd, that he'd set up and with respect for that, 
then bring in you know the showrunners writings and their creation of the half words and and hint at what you see hint very very slightly you know because even though the half words and the hobbits have the feet and the ears their circumstances are so incredibly different mm -hmm. and so it was nice to be able to just be a part of that and kind of hint towards the future are you ready for very creative fans to show up with their original cosplay of your characters well, yeah. we saw, we saw uh, Galadriel. Yes, Galadriel. Galadriel. We're hoping for that. I think the influence and the impact that we want to have on this, on the world, and for people to be able to feel seen and included and have somewhere to like call home, you know, mm -hmm. just like this work has been for many people, and I know it's been for you. I think we're very excited to host that, to host a new generation of that. How far would you go for immortality? I don't have to. <laughs> I can justify a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like. I, 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 it sounds like a non-answer, but I, I, having spent so much time imagining it mm -hmm. and kind of creating it in my own mind, I think it wouldn't be as much of a blessing as we, as finite beings, would imagine it to be. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the reality of everyone you know and love dying over and over again. Well, you'd be scared to cross the road as well, wouldn't you? Just in case, you know, you've got this immortality and all of a sudden, you know, just you get hit, not run down by a car, you know? Yeah, we're right. talking about our world here now, or Middle Earth. Yeah, you're just on a breathing tube for the rest of the mortality. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. You know, like, I'm immortal, but this is terrible. Is this is, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah I, I, don't, I don't think it's it, to be... Uh, you imagine it in this kind of beautiful way, but I think it would probably be a blessing and a curse mm. at the same time. And the curse would probably uh, uh, eventually outweigh the blessing. Well, let's look at um, the metaphysics in Tolkien's world are very important, and it fuels so much of the tragedy and the interesting uh, meat and potatoes of the story. So when it comes down to it, did you guys, during rehearsals or on the day of shooting, did you ever stop and check Tolkien, or did you have conversations about the metaphysics day by day? Constantly. Constantly. Mm. And, and I actually had the pleasure, um, oh, brilliant, with, was working with Rob Arameo, who is a walking, talking scholar and appendices, quite frankly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was so great while I um, use the, um, I, I, I struggle a bit with reading, so I, I kind of try to always go for the, delving into the kind of creative detail and I, I I work so much better with people talking and showing and so to have his mind in my ear throughout mm. the whole kind of really filming of the series um, as a friend and as a colleague in a lot of the scenes I just felt like I was being drip fed mm. absolutely everything so if there was this huge creative decision we could always throw it back to um, or find ways of or alter to make sure that we were staying within the um you know, flawless infrastructure of Tolkien's work. Are you guys ready for some of the fans to get really creative and have their own original cosplay based on your characters? Are you guys Very, ready for that? I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm, I'd be hononed. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the yeah. number of girls playing Visa this Halloween is going to make me so happy. I can't <laughs> see it happening. I'm being I can't really like... Wait. I'm being modest about it, but I'm like, no, it won't happen to me. It's very, very It won't happen to me. I'm honestly not done. No, it's great. <laughs> Trick or treat. Who are, I know who you are. <laughs> great costume. There's a, a feed into a greater readership when there's a larger popular culture exists, an adaptation, and thus the chain connects. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, luckily the books support it. You know, we're all interpretive artists taking from something that already exists. And the foundation of it, those texts, support all these iterations and that can stand in their own uh, creative space. The, 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 the bedrock is sound, so whatever we build constantly is connected with that. You may or may not know that uh, as a wedding minister, I do all these weddings, and I have one this afternoon. Do I propose to Nazani now? Yeah, I'll be glad to do that. Okay. okay. I'm here, yeah, I'm here okay. for you. That's amazing. Well, that's I'm, 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 I'm actually doing a Lord of the Rings wedding this evening. Are you? And wow, my are couple you? are going to be reciting a little bit of Treebeard's poetry. Would you be so kind as to do a stanza for me, please? Certainly. Of Treebeard's wow. poetry? Maybe the third one down? When summer lies upon the world, and in a noon of gold, beneath the roof of sleeping leaves, the dreams of trees unfold. 
When woodland halls are green and cool and wind is in the west, come back to me, come back to me and say my land is best. Oh. I love it. Sight, oh. sight red, my friend. <laughs> I'm just a little overwhelmed, but uh, oh. so are we. So we're all so in it we. together. When summer lies upon the well, and in a noon of gold, beneath the roof of sleeping leaves, the dream of trees unfold. When woodland halls are green and cold, and wind is in the west, come back to me, come back to me, and my land, and say my land is best. The summer lies upon the world, and in the noon of gold, beneath the roof of sleeping leaves, the dreams of trees unfold. When woodland halls are green and cool, and wind in the west, come back to me, come back to me, and say my land is best. Mm. Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was very gracious and very kind of you. When summer lies upon the world, and in a noon of gold, beneath the roof of sleeping leaves, the dreams of trees unfold. When woodland halls are green and cool, and wind is in the west, come back to me, come back to me, and say my land is best. So beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Well, Thank it you. is. I mean, but that the, you, you ask these questions about Tolkien, and that is it. Mm. You know that it that it, it is in the word, and from that everything blossoms, and, and we we have that luxury. Who would like to do a stanza of Treebeard's poetry? Oh, Just one the between the ant and the ant wife. Yeah, go on, do it. Try try that third paragraph. Can I just say English is my second language as well? So this is, <laughs> this is going to be a struggle. When summer lies upon the world and in a moon of gold, beneath the roof of sleeping leaves, the dreams of trees unfold. When woodland halls are green and cool and wind is in the west, come back to me, come back to me and say my land is best. Beautifully yes. done. That's, awesome. That's so beautiful. That's, That's lovely. The spirit That's of beautiful. Tolkien right here. Beautiful. I really appreciate you guys so much, and thank you. This is a blessing to see all of you here today. Oh, look at you. <laughs> um, all, all of you guys, I've, I have to say, it's amazing what I've seen so far, and I'm really delighted to, to see that this next wave of fandom is coming up and rising to meet you at this point. Uh, and, and thank you very kindly for all the hard, hard work that you've put into this. I'm sure it's going to be a really remarkable trip. And at the very least, we'll all have something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. We'll <laughs> definitely have things to talk about at the end thank of the day. Yeah. And thank you for being so gracious and kind. Really. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you for all you to us. Yeah.